Like Lorwyn in the last video, Shadowmoor's 20 unique basic land arts form two color panoramics as well. Demir, Oros Hove, Boros, Izzet, Selesnia, Simic, Rakdos, Gruul, Azorius, and Golgari. The darkening of the storybook imagery in the Lorwyn set makes this set an absolute slam dunk for me. Merch. Like. Comment. Subscribe. Hello! Welcome to Back to Basics, a show where I take EDH commanders and try to find the perfect basic lands to fit them. I love seeing someone sit down with some beautiful basic lands, but something that I love even more is seeing how well those lands match their commanders. One quick note before we begin. I like to give the artists credit for their artworks, but I may not pronounce their names perfectly. I'll try my best. Please forgive me and correct me if that ever happens. First up, we've got Animar, Soul of the Elements, who ended up being tougher than I initially imagined. The thing I found myself most drawn to was his bulky shape, how in many ways it was difficult to tell if his gnarled and massive form is indicative of tree roots or of old and weathered rock. I also noticed that there's a surprising amount of pale yellow hue present in this artwork that mutes the reds, blues, and greens that are in his color identity. So in efforts to match all of this, I went with this island from Battle for Zendikar illustrated by Noah Bradley, this mountain from Ixalan illustrated by Raul Vitale, and this forest from Ixalan illustrated by Titus Lunter. I feel like these three cards emphasize the twisting and growing of natural formations over a bright and sunlit landscape, which is a cornerstone to Animar's playstyle and his artwork. Secondly, we have a personal favorite, Arbo, Roar of the World. This card encourages a cat-based deck, so finding basics that match would be fun and enjoyable. So I did some digging and found this plains from Amonkhet, illustrated by Jonas DeRoe, which depicts a monument to Oketra, a god from the plane that bears a cat's face in the background. The forest was a bit more direct, going with this forest from Jumpstart, illustrated by Elena Danner. It's so rare to find lands that fit this perfectly, but it's a lot of fun to find them where you can. Third on the list, we've got Runo Stromkirk, which took a lot of effort because he comes in three very distinct color schemes, each one needing its own basic land pair. However, the first one is very simple. If we're looking at the black and white versions of his card art, then they blend perfectly with their corresponding Eternal Night frames from Innistrad Crimson Vow, being so unique thematically that nothing else can quite match them. It's looking at his other framings that gets more fun. A huge part of Runo's style is his Lovecraftian themes, a massive cosmic being summoned by a loyal follower, and the representation of this beast coming up from the sea. So I decided for his first art to focus on those themes of massive, bulky, imposing structures, like this island from Tempest, illustrated by Randy Galagos, and this swamp by Adam Paquette from Battle for Zendikar. Both of these arts have floating, monstrously large boulders that appear imposingly over bodies of water. Another choice would be to use the same island we saw here in Tempest, but pair it with this swamp from Invasion by Rob Alexander instead of the other swamp. I do this so we can match up the old bordered versions together purposefully, and it has notes of the blue that can help with color matching. But for Runo's third version, he emitted a completely different aesthetic choice. In this version, you see the dark blues accented by an almost wine red color being emitted from the skyline and the blood swirling around him. So the goal became to find arts for islands and swamps that exhibited those notes of red coupled with the blue. And the closest I could come was this island from Warren May from Shadowmoor, and this swamp that matches it that also comes from Shadowmoor, and forming a panoramic with your basic lands. I feel like it matches up perfectly. Fourth up, we've got Queen Marchesa, who has a very interesting color palette for being Mardu colored. You notice that the scene is so elegantly dark that there are very few notes of the red and white that make up her color identity. This fits the aesthetic of a corrupted royal official, so I wanted to highlight that darkness through the lands. So I settled on this plains from Guilds of Ravnica, illustrated by Richard Wright, this swamp from Jumpstart, illustrated by Titus Lunter, and this mountain by Adam Baquette from Return to Ravnica. The intensity of the city aesthetic, along with the darkness of the card arts, give the impression of Queen Marchesa's dealings being under the table. One quick note. I have noticed that looking through Jumpstart basics, they are generally more expensive than regular lands. So if you wanted to replace that swamp with another, then take a look at this swamp from Kaladesh, illustrated by James Pegg, that also evokes the idea of a criminal underbelly. And finally, we've got Brago, King Eternal, 
another royal commander. The thing that I noticed was how intense the gold and brass motif was in the artwork, coating his armor, his courtroom, all of which complement his golden card frame. So my goal became to try a pair that evokes the city aspect of his ruling power along with that gold slash brass aesthetic. So take a look at this plains from Return to Ravnica, illustrated by Young Hao Han, and this island from Return to Ravnica, also illustrated by Young Hao Han. Each of these artworks has a pale dusting of the golden aesthetic that denotes Brago's visual style and provides ideas of the urban bustle and medieval commerce that characterize his rule. But there you have it. Five more commanders sorted for which basic lands I think match the best. But I want to see what you think. Tell me which commanders you'd like me to try and pick up basic lands for. Comment below and let me know, and have a great day.